All right, buckle up your seatbelts on this one because we've got a ton of articles to go over and a big overarching idea involving the Vancouver Canucks and the Chicago Blackhawks. Now, you already know what we're talking about because you read the title, you saw the thumbnail. We are talking today about the 2023 NHL Entry Draft and the Vancouver Canucks own 11th overall pick. We're talking about this pick and the idea of them trading down, in particularly with the Chicago Blackhawks, who hold the first overall pick. Yeah, no spoiler alert, that's not the pick we are going to be talking about the Canucks trading with, but they also hold themselves the 19th overall pick. Now, initially, the 19th overall pick belonged to the Tampa Bay Lightning, but one year ago, in 2022, the Lightning sent this pick over to Chicago in the Brandon Hagel trade. It's been a year since then, and the Lightning, miraculously, did not make the finals again, so that pick is not going to be in the 31-32 range. Instead, because they lost in the first round, the pick is at 19. Now, the reason we're talking about this is initially because of an article published on The Athletic. Scott Powers went out there and published this piece on May 23rd, what I'm hearing about the Blackhawks from Connor Bedard to free agency. Now, you know the protocol, The Athletic is paid for material, so instead of going out there and screenshotting this piece, by the way, the link is in the description if you want to go ahead and read it, we're going over onto a Canucks article instead on the province from the next day. This is what Patrick Johnson wrote about. Johnston cites the Scott Powers Athletic article and uses it to form this piece. The title of the piece goes as follows. Canucks, a draft pick deal with the Blackhawks isn't a ridiculous idea. The Canucks and Blackhawks seem like a fit for a flip of first-round picks at the 2023 draft. This is the opening paragraph of PJ's post, by the way, link in the description as well, if you want to go ahead and read this article on the province. A report from the Athletic Chicago on Tuesday about the Canucks possibly trading their 2023 first to the Chicago Blackhawks might raise eyebrows, but given their self-inflicted cap predicament, it shouldn't be a surprise. According to the Athletic Scott Powers, the Blackhawks would love to move up from their second first-round draft position in next month's draft. The implication by Powers, written in his article, a veteran reporter with good connections, so you pay attention to who and what he's lining up, is that the Blackhawks are prepared to package second-round picks with their 19th overall pick in order to move up in the top 15. And in his estimation, the Canucks are a good match. He's not alone in this assessment. PJ then goes out there and writes his own few thoughts about this and how if the Vancouver Canucks wanted to go out there and use this as an opportunity to free themselves of some of the shackles on their salary cap space, this could be a good chance to do so. PJ writes that it's more likely the Canucks would be able to move out one of Connor Garland or Besser, who both carry perhaps bigger cap hits than their performance justifies. And if you were to try to add these guys into some sort of a trade with Chicago, it could look something like, let's say, Vancouver's 11th and Connor Garland for the Chicago 19th overall pick, a few seconds in there and maybe an extra pick. Something like that, just to throw it out there. Let's head back over onto the province article first and get a few more extra thoughts out there before really diving into this topic. A league source confirmed to Post Media that there is a feeling in Chicago that they're going to land the Canucks' first-round pick ahead of the draft, in a manner similar to that suggested by Powers. Another source presented the premise laid out by Powers concurred, this is the direction that GM Patrick Alvin has been looking, based on conversations had around the league. And so, based off of all the insider information that we're apparently gathering from this piece, not only would the Chicago Blackhawks sort of feel that the 11th overall pick is within their range and they're going to get it, but this also may be what Patrick Alvin is interested in doing so as well. Making a trade from 11 to 19, gathering some extra draft picks in the process, and maybe offloading a contract. The Vancouver Canucks right now, if you go over to their cap-friendly page and see where they're at in terms of the draft, they have their own first, they don't have a second, they've got two-thirds, three-fourths, no fifth, one-sixth, and no seventh. So they are missing some draft picks here, and if they were in a position to maybe trade from 11 to 19 and gather some extra seconds in the process to fill out that hole from number 32 to 64, this actually would be a pretty alright move in my opinion, mostly because I feel like the gap from 11 to 19 isn't really all that bad, especially when you consider just the depth of this year's entry draft in the first place. Even looking into prior 
years. I mean, you had guys like Cole Caulfield go number 15, Alex Newhook went after at 16, and Krebs at 17. Take a look at the 2022 draft. You had Liam Ogren, who went 19th, very good player over there. Marosh Nishenko went after at number 20. And then if you go into 2021, there also were some pretty good guys taken at the tail end of the top 20. Jesper Wallstead literally went 20th overall in 2021. And so the point that I'm trying to make here is, at 19th overall, you can still get a very good player. And for the Vancouver Canucks to move down eight spots in this year's selection, in my opinion, is honestly kind of worth getting an extra two prospects or so in the second round, especially if it means being able to offload a contract like Connor Garland, for example. As a result, you're seeing a lot of Canucks fans on social media posting their hypothetical trades, Connor Garland, Vancouver's first at 11th overall, and whatever, for Chicago's 19th and two seconds and another third or whatever, and everybody's, you know, pulling their answers together, getting that conversation going. You also had yourselves J.D. Burke making this Twitter thread right here. The discourse about whether the Canucks should move down from 11 to 19 at the draft is fascinating, because I don't necessarily think there should be a huge difference in the talent between those two spots, but there's no accounting for a Benson or perhaps even a Mishkov falling in the draft. That said, the data is pretty clear, and based on what we know about pick value, the Canucks would almost certainly be trading out of the impact player range in this hypothetical trade. Also, managing the cap shouldn't be a priority because this team sucks. Here's the TLDR. There is a way that you can sort of make this trade make sense for the Canucks, but only if it's made when they're on the clock and have certainty that it won't cost them a Benson or a Mishkov. And that's also the other aspect about this entire thing as well. If you go over to the Elite Prospects Draft Center and you see who exactly is eligible for this year's draft, there are a lot of guys that are very valuable, but I'd say there's about 10 or so names that really could make a huge difference right away. It kind of rounds itself out like Bedard, Fantilli, Carlson. You could say Mishkov, you could say Benson. I'm going to go out there and say Will Smith is in there. You could debate David Reinbacher. You could say Santin Pelika, Dvorsky, maybe even Andrew Crystal is in there as well. So you have to make sure that any of these guys are not falling down. Make sure that you're not going to be missing out an opportunity to draft the next Cole Caulfield who slips to number 15 because he's only 5'7". Now, that's an extreme example, and there isn't really anybody here in the top 10 or top 15 of 2023 that's that small, but... If there's a Matt Vemishkov that eventually slips down to 11th overall and the Canucks made this trade with the Blackhawks, let's say, two days before the draft, then... You're crap out of luck. You gave Chicago Bedard and Mishkov. Like, the Vancouver Canucks would never hear the end of it from all 30 NHL fan bases, so excluding Vancouver and excluding Chicago. Hey, why did you guys do this? Why did you give Chicago their next iteration of Kane and Taves in the same draft? You had the opportunity to get Mishkov. Imagine Mishkov playing with Pedersen, but no, you traded the pick away. And so, because it's a very real possibility that anybody of these super valuable guys at the top of the draft does fall, I do agree with J.D. Burke's point saying that, yeah, you gotta wait. Don't make the trade right away. Wait until draft day. If the Vancouver Canucks are guaranteed to not be missing out on a Mishkov or a Zach Benson or whoever else is gonna be able to fall, then fine, make the trade, but you don't know that until the actual date of the draft, because you don't want to be setting yourself up with the opportunity to fumble the bag, miss out on a potentially franchise talent, give Chicago that talent instead, and say it's all for the purpose of getting rid of Connor Garland's contract. Like... I do think it's important for the Vancouver Canucks to focus on cap space, especially since they're like the only team next year that's listed as being above the cap spending amount, but... There are other ways to go out there and do this that don't involve potentially missing out on top players should they actually be available in that spot in the first place. So, let me know your thoughts. Comment section down below, what are your opinions about the idea of Vancouver trading down from 11 to 19th overall with Chicago? The Hawks have pretty much house money here. They've got a whole bunch of picks already, they could trade up if they wanted to, they're gonna get Connor Bedard already too because they're getting first overall, and really, the 11th overall pick, should it be theirs to keep, may land them a guy that is potentially super valuable depending on who is there. So, in theory, it doesn't really feel all too bad. 11 to 19, you're dropping off 8 spots, there will always be value towards the end of the top 20 in these drafts. But there may be, maybe, just might happen to be some very significant talent 
at the end of the top 10 as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about the Canucks trading down? What are your thoughts about the Blackhawks trading up? I hope you enjoyed this video. Trolls 99. And bye.